Countess, hooray! Way to go, Lumberjack. A Dwarven Queen. Good job, chat. Look at you. Who knew? Chat can survive on 500% no pause. What? You gave Retson an infection? Well, that's going in the book. Way to go. Way to go. Uh, is it better to put a master of legendary weapon on a bad pawn to shore them up or on a god pawn? That is a good question. So for me, I would put it on the better pawn. And the reason why is... Okay, so, so at master working better... One of the things that you're getting is not just extra accuracy. You're getting way more damage. The damage really starts going up at masterwork. So for me, I want to make sure that damage is getting into the target. And even though the extra accuracy on the weapon will help compensate a little bit on, on worse shooters, I really want to make sure the wealth and raid points that are coming from those really good high qual or high wealth, high quality uh, weapons are actually getting into the target. Like... I want that damage into the target. So for me, I would I would most often put my best weapons on my best shooters. That's what it boils down to. For me. Uh, body modder. So this is Baby Dwarf. Probably not going to be a melee blocker. I say that. But if they roll, roll tough necks, maybe they will be. Um, mining and intellect, I guess. So Nimble would be great if he ends up being in a melee situation. I doubt that's going to happen very often. I might just take kind. Yeah, I'll just take kind here. Emergency Descent. Uh, this would be excellent depending on where it lands. Let's see where this lands. Oh, it kind of sucks. If it's tribal, we might run down there. I don't know that we can reach them in time. Did I get the drape bill? I did, but the quest expired right as I was getting it done. So it's there for the next time we have a quest like that. But it's like my dear old granny used to say. She was always saying this. You can shower with anything if it's wet. Why do I always have to be the one to wash your back, Granny? Why? All right, we'll start making our way there, but we are going back home if it's anything super scary. Okay, see ya. Not risking that. All right, Doomsday, <laughs> Doomsday raid. Not quite tribal. Not quite tribal. All right, good luck, guys. You got this. I've heard, uh, I've heard charge rifles are incredible, and Tynion definitely doesn't hate them, and he's definitely not nerfing them even more through through nerfing lancers. It's not a melee weapon, though. It's, it's not great, but it's not a melee weapon. Nusrus. I want to see this Doomsday go off, honestly. If it wasn't for the Doomsday, this would be a pretty easy raid. Here we go. Use it. His name is Ambush. I think we failed the quest. It would have actually been a very easy raid for us to deal with with our uh, upgraded kidneys if it wasn't for this. I guess I could have ambushed ambush, but it's kind of crazy he didn't use the the doomsday right off the bat. Now, are you going to make it out? I'm going to pronounce your name Dione. Oh my god, ambush. Missing the shot. Dione. He's running. He's running. He's bloodlust. He's pretty happy right now with some of this pain caused, but he wants to get out alive. He wants to live to beat someone else another day. Ambush, though, right on his tail. Look at him. We might got we we have some movement damage here. Ambush is not letting this slide. This warmonger will make it back to see his family. Maybe, maybe. Oh, through the trees. Oh no, he got stunned. Don't turn around. Um. Oh man, you shouldn't have taken that fight. Dione, Dione, you had this. Now you're dead. But often in life, when there is a death, there is a rebirth. D1 shall live on as ducks. Dione. Dione. I wish they were alive. She would have loved the ducks. When someone dies, Sky God opens a window or something. Sometimes I'm opening doors and closing windows. Sometimes I open both. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, let's reinstall that right over here. 
Get another one of these bad boys in here. A new Dwarven Forge. It's not a forge. A new Dwarven Forge. Royal Tribute Collectors, they're here! Multiple reduction specialists? Yes. So, that's a, a common thing that people ask. Like, in the last run, I had a bunch of shooting specialists, and people were like, how do you have so many shooting specialists? Do you just have, like, a lot of different ideologies? No. So, how it works is the leader and the moral guide, you can have just one of each of those. The other ones, there is no limit. You could literally have a colony that has 30 production specialists. There is no limit to these two. As long as they meet the minimum requirements, for instance, with, uh, with this one, they need a crafting or construction skill of six or higher. And you can make any of those, as many as you want into production specialists, it doesn't matter. So yeah, you can have as many of those specialists as you want with ideology. Um, usually I use shooting specialists. I didn't in this one for the themed run, but usually I, I do and I try to get as many shooting specialists as I can because they're so friggin' good. All right, Lumberjack. Lumberjack, how many points do you need? 17, I think. Took them so long to get to base, we need to go hurry up and get down there. Because they'll leave the map very quickly off the top here. There's six. All right, let's try that. Hey! Hooray! A Countess! Finally! So we need a Grand Meditation Throne. Um, we need to increase the impressiveness. Fine floor, etc. Okay. All right, so what do I do to not make pawns idle? In the early game, what I do is I set every pawn to research, even if they're bad at it. I set them as a four to research, as long as they can research. And every time I see someone idle, I throw down another research bench because research stacks and all goes into your research pool. You have as many researches as you want. And so that's what I do in the early game. In the mid game, uh, depending on what I, if I super care about wealth or not, I'll do the same thing with advanced research benches. And then the very late game, I'll do that with uh, deep drills. You just saw me move those up and scanners. So scanning is uh, ground penetrating, ground penetrator, penetrating. I can't say penetrating. Apparently, ground penetrating scanners are research jobs. If you go into work and you hover over research, it will show you that operating a ground penetrating scanner is the last research job. So if they don't have anything to research, but they're set to research, they will go scan. And so I'm using that, um, as you can see, to scan a crap load of materials under the earth. I also have all the idle people set to clean and haul. So that is getting done as well. You think I just want to say penetration a bunch of times? Penetration. Is it better from Cranny or is it better from Sky God? Like a commandment. I command thee. Penetrate. Consentfully. Thanks, Sky God. Scan gold. Now we scan close by gold. Excellent. Way to go. Thank you. Uh, all right. We're going to start making... Uh, marine armor in forever. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's kind of terrible. We've had Kinnon as a prisoner for like three years. He's been there in the colony for so long as a prisoner. We gave him as a gift to the Empire. He had a breakdown. The Empire just killed him. <laughs> they, they literally just got bought this guy with honor. What a story. There he goes. There he goes. He's a hero. He's a hero. Let's give him an honorary Dwarven burial. By putting him on a grate with fire underneath. But yeah, we'll be doing the uh, the end game launch after we get this Countess. What FPS do you get? Mine always seems to struggle mid game, but nothing is maxed out. So there's only so much you can do, Bob, with RimWorld as far as... And it, it basically goes by ticks per second. That's that's like one of the big metrics, you know. I'm not sure how many frames, but there's only a few things you can do with RimWorld because it's not super optimized. One, play on a smaller map. Two, have less pawns. Or three, obviously upgrade your computer to an extent. And then four, I guess, is to get a performance enhancing mod. What? You can give you can give RimWorld steroids? Kinda. It's called Rocket Man, is the one I, I suggest. Rocket Man. Rocket Man will help a lot with uh with some late game and mid game slowdown, so that's illegal. Uh you have to have a prescription for Rocket Man. But yeah, even with an amazing computer. There's only so much you can do to speed up RimWorld, unfortunately. It looks like all the fine flooring is done. What was the next part we needed? Grand Meditation Throne. We're gonna need a bigger room. Some more columns and some drapes to go. Nice. Dug too deep. I'm just gonna grab everyone just in case. We don't need this many people for it, but just so I can keep track of where everyone is. It's 
dug too deep. Taken care of. Taken care of. Let's see here. I need the uh, the grand throne, right? 75 gold. That there and that's done. All right, get that made. Legendary marine armor. Let's put that on one of our melee blockers. There we go. Let's check out the defense on that bad boy. 190% sharp resistance. Nice. Whoa, legendary steel grand meditation throne. Holy crap. How do how do you not have art on this? How is this one of the legendaries that can roll? You can have a leg, you can have artwork on like a bed. We have it. You can't get it on a legendary meditation throne. How much is this thing worth? It's actually not as much market value as I thought. Can you paint the thrones? Let's see. There's some things you can't. You can paint the throne. Let's uh let's uh yeah, let's see it painted red. Fine, I'll do the art myself. I want to see what it looks like. Look at that. It's now... <laughs> it's it's the McDonald's of Thrones. Welcome to the Ronald McDonald's Grand Meditation Throne. <laughs> uh, where'd you get your throne? I got it in a Happy Meal. Ba -ba -bum -bum -bum. Colony's just loving it. You kind of liked it before I mentioned it McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's lawyers coming in. That's where all the donations to the Ronald McDonald house go into making grand thrones. Uh, can you go over how the raid pattern changes for ship launch? Getting close to launch and you're curious. It's been a while, uh, or is there a guide? I don't have a guide on it. That's actually a, a good one that could be a very quick one. So uh, it looks like Smurf already has you, you covered. But basically how it works is when you start up the ship, you have to defend it for 15 days. During that 15 days, Every day and a half, it's going to roll either one or two raid events. And so you can have a ship launch if you're really lucky with just 15 raids or around that 10 to 15 raids. Or you could get really unlucky and you could have one that has like 25-ish or something. So. so you can plan for that a little bit. Basically, what I would tell you is to plan to have 20 raids. Have a, have a plan in mind, have enough drugs, food special equipment, whatever you need for 20 raids. And I would also suggest you start the ship at the beginning of a season that's going to be kind to you, like a spring or a summer. You don't want to start, you know, it in the winter on a map that has like deathly cold winters that you might have trouble with food or something. I mean, obviously it depends on what you have going on in your playthrough, but just in general, I would say start it up at the beginning of a good season and get ready for your 20-ish raids. Oh, and it's also... Important to know that the ship launch event is the same coding for all three of the, the storytellers. So if you are playing uh, Phoebe and you're like, all right, Phoebe's going to hit me less with ship raids than Cassandra. It's not the case. So ship raids are are separate. They're their own thing. And each storyteller just pulls that, that in for the ship launch. So have no mercy on the raids. If you have temporary weapons, stuff, use them. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I was talking about too with the um, like low shields, stuff like that. Use what you got on them. It so. might be tempting to, I mean, don't blow everything on the first couple of raids unless you really need to. And if there's a certain raid that is your weakness, you know, definitely use stuff against that one regardless when they come. But uh, don't be too crazy about rationing stuff. There's going to be way less stuff getting done in the in the launch period. So, you know, you might want to make extra food and actually make a freezer and shove it full. Might want to get a bunch of fine meals or lavish meals ready uh, for a mood increase during those 15 days. You know, stuff like that. What stage of the RimWorld run do I enjoy the most? I enjoy early game until end of mid game. My favorite portion of RimWorld is probably from 10,000 wealth to 150,000 wealth on 500%. This one we could have ended probably a week ago, but we're doing the thematic ending by having a, um, a royal. So it's taking a little bit longer. That's all right. That's all right. We're almost done with it now. We got our Countess. We just need to do their ceremony. Johnny Bravo. You know what? Uh, not only did I love that show as a kid. I mean, it, 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 going back and watching it now, it's kind of terrible in a, in a lot of ways. But there's always a scene from a specific episode of Johnny Bravo that I, that I think about. And one of the reasons why is I remember when I was a kid, my grandmother, uh, like Cartoon Network just really started. My grandmother decided to, uh, to hang out and watch some of these cartoons with me. And she liked the Johnny Bravo show. That was that was like her favorite one out of those early Cartoon Network ones. And I can remember we watched the episode where he's looking for his grandmother. 
Where's Mama? Mama! And he's looking for her everywhere. <laughs> and it's just a silly thing where he's like going to lots of different scenes. And he like puts his head under the water and asks if she's down there and stuff like that. It always stuck with me because uh, my grandmother just loved it. She was just cracking up the whole time. And me and my grandmother were, were really close. Really close. It was kind of my escape place with the, with the crazy childhood that I had. So, But anyway, back to the happy memory. <laughs> She really liked Johnny Bravo. I, I remember when Cartoon Network was released. A lot of those early cartoons. And we I used to go over there and watch Dexter. Love Dexter back then. Yeah, that's not my yeah, the granny from the stream quotes is not my <laughs> she would never say any of those things, but uh speaking of granny from the quotes, a different granny. It's like my dear old granny used to say, she was always saying this. I can't believe I accidentally became a little girl. Hang on, Granny. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wow. All right. Uh, so what's the impressive this? We're at 149, 149. I could make a grand sculpture instead. Kind of crazy that this is only 149. We could make it more spacious. You know what, Lilith? I'm not sure you're ever going to get to use this. But let's move it somewhere just in case. I think we're done with the jeans. Let's go ahead and rip those down. We'll move this. We'll, uh, we'll enclose this to make it a little fancier. All right, so we are still getting things ready for the end game. Uh, we need to get our countess actually you know, turned into a countess through the ceremony. So uh, we got to get the throne room all set up so we can do that. And in the meantime, we're mining gold, steel, etc., and getting marine armor. So we might as well get that set up while we're doing all this other stuff. If we end up getting all the marine armors um, before we do the ceremony or before the, uh, the royal launch or whatever you want to call it, then we will also make some uh, uh, bionics for our people. Some bionics. We actually don't need this prisoner anymore either. How long until they're dead? Three days. Three days. Okay. Why has the medical emergency been up? It's this person's dying of chemical withdrawal, but we don't need them anymore. So, but I can't just harvest their organs or kill them because our doors don't like that sort of thing. Okay, yeah. Another breach. Another tribal breach. Okay. Fertilize our mushrooms. That sounds kind of suggestive, you know? Like, excuse me, would you like to fertilize my mushroom? Yeah, start using that. Let me know how it turns out. You guys that are still out in the market, you know, you're on you're on Tinder or something, please use that on Tinder. Post, post the results in the Discord, I would, I'd appreciate it. Adam, you're making Tinder even worse for women. Worse or better? The worst they can say is it depends. <laughs> if someone actually uses that and let us you know, that would be awesome. I didn't actually think anyone would. What if what if our colonists held the hands in Rimworld? Just kidding. Unless, unless. We're trying to leave the side of the map too because I have it open. <laughs> All right, we're getting some shooting experience here. Do I consider those mushrooms lead fortified? Uh, I will not comment on that. However, they are fully organic. So this soil has never had uh, any kind of non-natural fertilizer used on it. Uh, definitely not within the last like 25 years. So I'm gonna sell these as completely organic. Uh, and that's, that's my only comment there. What are we getting refugees for? It's still not doing the thing where it counts the children. Or it only counts children or whatever. 20 refugees. 19 of them are children. 19 children, save them. They're not dwarfs. It's like they're not even real people. They're not dwarfs. <laughs> no, I'm not taking those. Let's slow down my game for no reason. We're at 159. We're almost there. So this should do it. A raid. Dropped it on top of us. Oh, it's, it's down there. It's down there. What do they have? No explosives. Okay.
I was a little slow to react, so they destroyed some stuff. That sucks. Might do a little cheesing down there. A little cheese and a little dwarf cheese, maybe. What is the most deadly human Noid faction now? In my current setup, it was originally Wasters uh, Toxic Raids because we didn't have anything to deal with the close range toxic stuff. But now that we have kidneys, the deadliest is probably Explosive Itakin. Floor Baby has become an adult. Floor Baby. I cannot believe this Floor Baby turned out so well. I'll just grab Super Immune. Screw it. Great memory tough, super immune, and they were unconscious most of their life. Nice. Floor gave it a good immune system. Why does the game warn you when you get too big of a map? Okay, there's a couple things going on. Um, let me let me explain this and then I'll set the the ceremony. There's a couple things the game warns you about on a big map, and here's the reason why. One of them is that when you have a bigger map, your pawns will ignore their needs if they are able to go do a job like elsewhere on the map. They will ignore their needs. And since the map is really big, that's where the screwed up pathing a lot of times is, is part of it, is that they will like go try to do their job and they will literally like break down or starve to death without like stopping. So if you have like a huge map and they're coming down here to do something and they're already like queued to do it, a lot of times they will just keep going no matter what, no matter what. So if you're not using zoning, it doesn't really matter if you're using zoning like I do. Um, if you're not using zoning, stuff like that will happen. So. Um, and pawns will get kind of kind of lost out there and whatnot. Okay, there's there's one. The second one is performance. The bigger the map, the more things that are calculating all the time. Every single tile is calculating things of like plant growth and you know when fires happen and pathing and all kinds of stuff like that. So it, it mainly hits performance and it hits pawns, uh, how pawns act if you let them go out on the map. Now there are some other kind of downsides as far as buggy things that happen. If you have a huge map, humanoid raiders, especially ones that prepare a lot of time, are going to end up starting to starve, starting to get hungry about 15 hours into the raid, and they will actually just give up. So you can have a map that's big enough. Like if this was one of those 900, 900 maps and we had our base up here and a humanoid raid spawned down here, they prepared for a while, they would literally start starving before they got to the base and they would just leave the map. So there are things like that as well, but the big warnings are for performance and for pawns screwing up, especially if you don't use zoning rules. No zoning run on the max size map. Yeah, so I have a comment on that one too. So this is another thing. We actually talked about it before the stream. I had a comment on the traits guide telling me that Quick Sleeper was bad. They were like, actually, Quick Sleeper is a pretty bad quirk because my Quick Sleeper pawns wake up before everyone else and they head off by themselves out to do their job on the edge of the map. And... Uh, they end up breaking down out there or getting caught by a raid and I don't and I don't notice it. So they're basically saying quick sleeper is bad because I don't zone my pawns to not go to the edge of the map. <laughs> and I don't pay attention to them. It's such a weird comment. All right, it is ceremony time. Here we go. Lumberjack. I have a document of negative comments. I do because they're so funny. <laughs> Some really funny ones. Like that guy that was telling me Oh man, that guy was out of his mind. I had to block him on Twitter even. He he went to Twitter to start asking me to come fight him. He's like, I I can drive up to Indianapolis from Kentucky. It's only a few hours away. We can settle this. And I'm like, man, you're out of your friggin' mind. What? That guy told me, I think you're going to be successful. But at the end of the day, when you have all that success, you're going to hate yourself for it. And he started talking about me being a member of the global elite and all this other stuff. And I was like, <laughs> so weird. So it's so silly. It's so silly the one percent he's a member of the rimworld illuminati countess hooray way to go lumberjack a dwarven queen <laughs> holy crap look at that neuroquake but psychically deaf so uh, side casting is elf stuff ew how dare you tell me to have fun oh god and then not long ago there was that guy that was saying People just playing video games for fun is what's wrong with society. <laughs> and he was like, I can go into more details if you want. And someone else asked him and he posted like a friggin' essay about how politics is all screwed up because kids think they can just play video games. And I really, I thought that one was a troll. I thought that one was a troll. I was like, there's no way this can be a real person. So I clicked on their name and they have videos on their YouTube going back like years and years and years. And all of them is like them talking through their phone camera. And I was like, 
all right, maybe this person, maybe they're, they're like, un I don't mean this in a negative way, but maybe they're really unstable. So I clicked on one of them just to see. And the first thing the guy says into the, into his phone is he's like, it's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. The world needs me. I, there's no one else in the world like me. The world needs me. And I don't know how to make people realize that. He was going into this like manifesto thing. And I'm like, alrighty, well, I'm not going to interact with this person at all. <laughs> there can be no good from this. You worked with someone like that? Yeah, it is, it's sad though, seriously. Vatdorf, Vatdorf, tough. Nice, look at that, another tough pawn right here at end game. Uh, just like we need, just like we need. Rath Thrumbos. Have you worked around the missile exploding through low shields? So the weird thing about that is now that Welcome explosions back. happen on low Your shields, more often than not, the pirates that are shooting the rockets end up shooting their own low shield and blowing themselves up. So it's actually been less of a problem than I thought. Definitely think eventually it's going to get to this point where uh, it's going to screw me over. But in general, they've been just blowing themselves up. <laughs> so, so what ends up happening is the enemies are rushing you. The ones with the low shields come up fr first. You hit them. It, they pop the low shield. The enemies behind it are stupid and they'll aim triple rockets doomsdays, etc. through it, those will hit the low shield, blow up and kill a lot of their own people. So basically you just need to be more careful to not pop their low shields before their people blow themselves up on it. That's what's happening most often right now. I'm going to make this area a little bit prettier before the end as well. That way if we have to hang out here, I need to remember to bring light out there too. Oh. The waiter's asking <laughs> So, would you like would you like cheese on your soup? It depends. What kind of cheese? How much are we talking? It's costing the extra. Would you say it goes well with this soup? All right, I made a lot more of those so that we can uh, burn all the corpses that are gonna be there really quick. Need more of them. <laughs> those are our dwarven forges. Our dwarven forges. Plasteel is like the Rimworld equivalent to Mithril. I like that. I'm gonna go with yes. Why so many crematoriums? Because during the end game event, we're gonna have potentially thousands of corpses to deal with. And our people actually dislike corpses. So not only are they gonna be unhappy with the corpses being around, but the corpses are also gonna cause rot stink. So I need to be able to clean up from these massive end game raids uh, as fast as possible. So, and yeah, ship launch is gonna be, or ship launch, it's gonna be really, really hectic. So the more well, those I have just throw people on to clean things up, the better, you know. And almost everyone has marine armor. Almost, almost. Can doors go into space? Yes, and we will. We will. Met cluster. Sun blocker. Not in this run, met cluster. Not in this run. Yeah, even though this is not woken up, the sun blocker is already enabled. Um, It's not a huge thing. It takes out some of our beer production. We could see if the next raid is a normal raid to take care of it for us. We'll still wake it up though. Hopefully just gently, just gently wake it up. The shuttle has arrived. Okay, auto load that shuttle. Not that we need that anymore, but get those alpacas shoved in there. The shuttle popped out of baby llama. <laughs> oh. Here's your extra alpaca. Love dryads. You wish there were more. Yeah, it would have been it would have been pretty awesome for the dryads to get the mechanator treatment. You know, <laughs> just redo them to be more varied and crazy. But wishful thinking, I suppose. Yeah. So the thing about Clar dryads, they actually have higher DPS output than a Thrumbo, but they just they die so quickly. They die so quickly. So what I wish and what I said when dryads first came out is if they had given all the dryads the ability to combine themselves into a special dryad, just like the tree huggers have, like the uh, the tree huggers have dryads that you produce, and when it gets to four, they combine and you get another tree, basically, right? If they had done that for all of them, where, like, you can combine them to make a, like, bigger claw, or, you know, four claws together, form another one, that would be uh, the Voltron ones, yeah. That would have been pretty awesome. That would been pretty awesome, but... Uh, there is a mod for that now, though. Wait, 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 what are you doing? Excuse me, what, what are you doing?
Okay, kind of cool. It's the first time we fought an Apocrytal in like the old fashioned way in there. We need stronger walls, but there's no such thing. Masterwork and legendary chain shotguns. They almost feel like cheating sometimes. <laughs> so that ended up working pretty well as far as the repair goes. I just need a better person as the fourth one. That's the only one that really fell. So this person, Rain Man, needs to be someone else in Rain Man's position. So let's move Rain Man down. Let's move you over there. So Silver would be excellent, excellent for it. Kind of whatever. I can just send someone to take care of this so that we can keep growing our beer if we want. Uh, but we're going to wait on that because Cassandra is not on cooldown right now. Obviously, she just attacked us, so. so we'll wait on that. We'll wait on that. Are Locust Armor worth it or Lower Armor just isn't? Locust Armor is is, is fine. It's good. I, it's so expensive to go after. Like, all the special armors are slightly worse than their counterpart, but they, they're kind of cool to have, you know? So it's you should be fine with it if you want to use it. Way to go, war merchants. Hey, it's Huntsman. Boy, I hope Huntsman lives. Let's take a look. Oh, look at that. Huntsman's just uh, going to wander off the map. Nice. Who's our armor for your melee troops? Yeah, it's, it, they're really cool to use. Uh, uh, Ken, I don't want you to die, but I'm going to send you down there. Here, I'm giving you a legendary gun, too. Don't die, Ken. Don't die. Oh, that would suck. Oh, my God. It's so far away. Oh, we don't get captured again. That's what I was just thinking. Yeah, the Tacoma Ken story. All right, Ken. Take it out. That's a lot of damage. Jeez, man. Are they on the ground for the war merchant? No, they they switched that a long time ago, too, where most of the goods are carried by the animals. And the animals run away as soon as the combat starts. So you typically don't have them dropping much. Way to go, Ken. Way to go. Look at you not getting uh, attacked, kidnapped, etc. Beating mechs to death with beer bottles. As the rim gods intended. All right, let's check out our permit choice. What do I want this time? I usually get arrow drone salvo. It could still help, but it's not as great under the mountain. I would cast it as they're coming into the mountain, which is a little risky. Especially since this is our only royal. Uh, I think I'll get the cataphract squad. I could use that and actually put Lilith through, the, uh, through that cycle. Yeah, screw it. Um, I mean, the other ones aren't super mega helpful, so I guess we'll still call this or get this. Alrighty. Okay. Bio regeneration cycle on Lilith. There you go, Lilith. Look at you. Oh, I should have put that in here. There's still time. All right, Lilith no dwarf. Get in there. 22 days. That's the longest I've ever waited for anything. She's going to pop out of there at the end of ship launch or uh, at the end of the royal launch. Like, all right, guys, I'm ready to go to the stars. I don't even know half these people.